What is adolescent idiopathic scoliosis? The most common diagnosis of scoliosis is adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. And a lot of patients have really no idea what that means. So first of all, let's talk about what is scoliosis. Uh, scoliosis is an unnatural sideways curvature of the spine with rotation. The scoliosis has to be measured at a Cobb angle of 10 degrees or greater. It is a structural condition, it is progressive, and it definitely affects the spine, pelvis, and it can affect other areas of the, spine, of the body if it continues to progress. Left untreated, the, as the curve worsens, the bigger it becomes, the more likely it is to become bigger. So therefore, treating curves smaller tends to be, or tends to lead to a better outcome or better prognosis. We know there are different types of scoliosis. Idiopathic, in the word adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, means that it's not clearly associated with a single cause. We meaning that it means unknown cause. Idiopathic, idiopathic scoliosis tends to be multifactorial, meaning that we believe it's a combination of multiple variables and multiple different things that can lead to a patient developing scoliosis. That means one patient with scoliosis, I mean, adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, may have a different reason that caused it to them than another person. It's not the same for every single person. And this is 80% of all cases with scoliosis. A lot of patients talk about genetics. Can genetics be a causation factor associated with scoliosis? They've done studies on identical twins with the exact same DNA. And it's not always that both, both identical twins both have scoliosis. In fact, only about 60% of the cases share scoliosis, and even the ones that do could have different size curves. So we know there's another variable, there's another factor, and we don't know what it is. Outside of the 80% that's diagnosed with idiopathic scoliosis, 20% of cases of scoliosis are diagnosed with a known cause, meaning a neuromuscular type of scoliosis, meaning they have some neuromuscular condition that's causing scoliosis, congenital scoliosis, meaning they have some type of hemivertebra or sometimes malformation within the bones of the spine, which can be causing scoliosis. Degenerative scoliosis is normally a result of misalignments that have called the spine to deteriorate over time and causes a scoliosis at the site of degeneration. And traumatic scoliosis is where somebody receives a trauma that causes causes misalignment and causes a curve to occur at that time. However, the most prevalent type of scoliosis by far is idiopathic scoliosis. And idiopathic scoliosis is mostly diagnosed in adolescent stage, thus getting the diagnosis of adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. And this is a person that's diagnosed with scoliosis between 10 and 18. However, it doesn't necessarily mean that the adolescent patient won't become an adult, and it doesn't necessarily mean that the adolescent scoliosis didn't have scoliosis when they were a juvenile. It just means that they were diagnosed at this time. So what is unique about adolescent idiopathic scoliosis? Well, first of all, is that we don't know the cause. So we can't cure scoliosis. There is no treatment out there that cures scoliosis, not even surgery, cures scoliosis. Surgery tries to remove the, reduce the curve size, but it's not reducing or eliminating the cause. So there is no treatment that can actually cure scoliosis. But we do know scoliosis is treatable. And it's also not, not only is it treatable, treatable surgically, but it's also treated conservatively. It's kind of like this. It's kind of like, I always look at scoliosis as kind of like an earthquake. We know an earthquake can cause buildings to fall. And once buildings fall, the earthquake caused it. But if we cured earthquakes, it doesn't necessarily mean the building's going to stand back up. We still have to rebuild the building. And the same thing is true about scoliosis. Just because we don't know what caused it and we can't cure it doesn't mean we can't help it. It means as long as we deal with the structural alignment of the spine and we go after the underlying uh, structural component of scoliosis, we normally can manage the curve enough to where the person can get through the adolescent stages with minimal progression and minimal problem is that it can occur as a result of scoliosis. The main trigger for adolescent scoliosis is growth. As they grow, as they grow, the curves will progress, and this is a number one risk for progression in all scoliosis. Most curves will progress rapidly during this growth phase. So therefore, adolescents have a very high risk of rapid progression, and it's directly related to how much the curves progress. Unfortunately, I've seen curves progress a very rapid amount in a very short duration. The fastest amount of, or the most degrees I've seen in the shortest times, I've seen curves progress 
almost 20 degrees in a little over six weeks. Icing curves progress 60 degrees in six months. Unfortunately, the curve progression is not linear. It's very cyclic based upon how the, the, the patient or how the child goes through the growth. Most patients grow cyclically. It's not linearly. So progression is going to be very cyclically. And there's no way to predict, meaning if we see a patient with a 10 degree curve or a 15 degree curve, there's no way to know what their curve will be when you're done growing. The only thing that we know is that, that it's at risk for progression. As the curve progresses, the risk of progression increases directly related to the size of curves. So meaning a 30 degree curve is more likely to progress more than a 15 degree curve during growth. So therefore keeping curves small is a very uh, good approach because the smaller the curve is, the less likely it is to become severe. When we look at adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, we know there's very, there, there's very two different treatment approaches and they offer very different potential outcomes when it comes to scoliosis treatment. The traditional approach is basically a watch and wait approach. It's basically an approach that funnels patients towards spinal fusion and surgery because pretty much there is no recommendation to reduce the curve until the curve becomes severe enough to have surgery, which is typically somewhere around 40 to 45 degrees. That's when you're diagnosed with severe scoliosis and now they're told that you need surgery. But if we know small curves are much less likely to progress than severe curves, wouldn't we want to treat curves when they're smaller to keep them small? And the reason why there's never a recommendation done this in the traditional manner is because they don't have anything to offer you. When they think of conservative treatment, what they think about is treatment that's meant to treat injuries. And we know scoliosis isn't an injury, meaning an adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. It's not an injury that's causing it at this point, it's structural. So using injury treatment, meaning low dose, long duration treatment, provides very little reduction for the scoliosis curvature. And therefore, since they're aware of this, they never recommend it. However, there's other conservative treatments that don't treat this way and can be, more, can be applied to a person's scoliosis very close to the time of diagnosis to therefore reduce the curve and be more proactive to eliminate or reduce the risk of progression during growth. When we look at treatment options, what specific treatment options do I offer patients that can be very specific in dealing with scoliosis? First of all, is conservative chiropractic-centered treatment. I call it a functional approach to scoliosis. Chiropractic has a very corrective mindset, and that is why I am a chiropractor, because we think that we don't want to wait and let curves become big enough where you need surgery. We want to act very proactively. We want to act in ways that are going to help reduce the curve to manage the scoliosis before it becomes severe. And if it is severe, we want to reduce it to levels that are below surgical thresholds, so therefore the patient can avoid surgery altogether. So the, even though it's a chiropractic-centered approach, it's very functional, it's very integrated, meaning we're using a multimodal approach that it's going to try to give us the very best results possible. We're using chiropractic care as a center, but we're using uh, specific office therapy and rehabilitation that's designed for scoliosis. This is asymmetrical rehabilitation that's designed to help pull and push the spine into a straighter position, and it helps increase flexibility and mobility of the curvatures, which can be one of the limiting factors in conservative treatment. Based upon the results of the in-office therapy and rehabilitation, we can prescribe scoliosis-specific home therapy to help also mirror the office therapy to help coordinate the patient with home treatment so they can be more long-lasting and help make it more stabilizing over time. With these three things, after we can reduce the curve and make the curve more flexible, we also design and build customized corrective braces to help push the spine into a straighter alignment. This full customization of treatment plan is what's required to deliver the very best results for each and every specific adolescent scoliosis. Even though a patient is diagnosed with adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, that's a general diagnosis for a very complicated condition within the spine. Unfortunately, adolescent idiopathic scoliosis not always easily diagnosed in its early stages. 
the, very early off, the, 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 the scoliosis can be very difficult to, to, to detect. Curves under 15 degrees, you may see very mild forms of posture misalignment, very subtle, uneven shoulders, very subtle rib changes. You normally don't have any pain. Kids with scoliosis don't feel any type of pain. The biggest curve I've ever seen in a child, unfortunately, has been 155 degrees, and they had no pain. So early detection sometimes can be very difficult. The average curve is normally diagnosed when it's already broken 25, 30 degrees, because that's when you can really start to see severe or more significant postural changes in the shoulders and the ribs and in the waist. And postural changes are the number one reason why scoliosis is diagnosed. However, we definitely do recommend treating curves early because we want to find it early, but because of the limited scoliosis screenings these days, and because a lot of times they're not even performed very accurately by physicians and they'll be performed by either PE teachers or doctors who don't even focus on the spine itself, a lot of times it's, it's missed. But if we do detect it early, we definitely recommend treating the curve as early as possible because that's going to improve the chance of success as a result of conservative treatment, even though it doesn't guarantee it, but it definitely improves it. So we recommend that patients seek out a treatment option that, it, that is aligned with their expectations, meaning if the treatment option for you is to prevent surgery and not let the curve worsen and go into the adult stage with the smallest possible curve, you should be looking for an option that does that. Conservative treatment options are really just watch and wait approaches until the curve becomes severe enough to have surgery. And if it doesn't become severe enough to have surgery, well, it still could worsen but it doesn't hit the surgical threshold, that's considered successful. At Scoliosis Reduction Center, we offer more proactive treatments that can not only stop the curve from progressing, but reduce it, increase strength of the body, allow the spine to be supported through the, through the entire process, and preventing more progression, and definitely eliminating the need for more invasive treatments. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.